Madison Police Chief John Wallace and Jefferson County Sheriff's Department Chief Deputy Josh Taylor. So, Chief, Chief Deputy, thank you guys so much for joining us once again on the program. It's always our pleasure, AJ. Thanks for having us. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning, and sorry we missed you at the last week in uh, July. Well, I think that's definitely uh, – we'll start off by kind of talking about that um, just briefly. Uh, we were obviously supposed to have a July show, but um, obviously out of the Madison Police Department for the whole law enforcement community and Jefferson County's community as a whole, we're all still you know, feeling for the loss of Officer Jeremy Cox. Yeah, very tough time for the department, as you can imagine, and law enforcement in general. Uh, Officer Cox was just an outstanding young man, uh, a little over five years ago, diagnosed with uh, brain cancer. Uh, he fought back. He uh, actually had surgery and came back uh, to work for several years. Uh, then his, uh, unfortunately, his cancer uh, returned with a vengeance, and uh, ultimately he lost his life. But um, very uh, difficult on his family, obviously, and uh, uh, he has a, a young daughter that uh, that we are taking donations for. We have a, uh, there has been a fund set up on her behalf through uh, through her family. So um, we're just very appreciative of all the support and uh, that we received from the community. It was uh, it was much needed and well accepted, and uh, and we appreciate everybody standing behind us during those difficult times. Uh, in this type of work with uh, with many other occupations you you become a family and uh, and for me it was almost like losing a son I mean, and, and for the officers on the department it was like losing a brother so um, we're uh, pulled together and and uh, and came through it stronger knowing that uh, that officer Cox will always be looking over our shoulder and taking care of us now certainly and I know he wasn't wearing the same uniform as you chief deputy Taylor but as we said it's a loss that's felt throughout the whole community. Oh yeah, I was going to say over the years since I came back to the area I had numerous occasions to work uh, and just even have fellowship with Jeremy Cox and everything so I mean professional and a personal relationship with him so as John said it is almost like uh, a brother or a son that you lose with it and everything. I mean, he called everybody. He'd say Daddy-O or Dad uh, <laughs> as how he would address you. So, I mean, I'm sure John uh, had the same. I mean, I'd get text messages from him. Hey, what are you doing today, Dad? I was like, do you really think I'm that old? <laughs> and he's like, nope, that's just you, Daddy-O. <laughs> so. yeah. Great sense of humor. Love the outdoors. And uh, I said doing his eulogy, he's the only guy I know could uh, sport a sunburn better than me. So <laughs> <laughs> that's like, like like the outdoors. Great uh, great young man, and uh, we uh, know he's resting in peace. Absolutely. I mean, uh, opportunities I've had over the years to interact with Officer Cox, he was just an upstanding, just a downright good guy. Yeah. And we definitely uh, will all miss him for sure. He uh, he served our community very well. Absolutely. So obviously. Uh, we understand with the circumstances why we weren't able to do a July show, but happy to have you guys back here in the studio for August. So, uh, Chief Wallace, what's new at the Madison Police Department? Yeah, quite a few things going on. Actually, we're we're finally fully staffed now. We have uh, we have 30 officers. We have actually. Uh developed uh, two more detective positions so that really uh, enhances our ability to investigate and follow up on cases and to take on additional roles uh, with uh, narcotic investigations and and uh, in other areas of interest that we want to been wanting to address but simply just didn't have the manpower or the time to do it uh, now we do and uh, we're going to expand out into many different areas but uh, but excited to be fully staffed and, and decided excited to have actually four detectives on the department um, we had two Still have to, to the outstanding detectives, uh, Cutshaw and Harris. They did a great job, but uh, man, the demand on them was getting really tough. You know, when you're on call 24/7, makes it very difficult. So, <clears throat> excuse me, having these two additional detectives gives these guys a little downtime, a little time away from the office, which is very important. So, we uh, we welcome. Uh, Jeremy Perkins and Sean Scudder to the detective division. Uh, they're up and running and, uh, and doing a great job, so we're excited for the future. We've talked uh, a few different times over the last couple of months about the crime suppression team, yes. and that is uh, having having a full staff means that you know yeah. when you're not having to spread out your resources too thin, sure. that means you're allowed to let them focus on their specialties and let the other departments focus on their specialties. Yeah, yeah. Our crime suppression team is a little department within the department. Um, you know, everybody that want to be a participant uh, been included uh, this allows guys to come out and work uh, you know on their days off overtime on on different details that we may have and uh, and uh, his chief deputy will tell you it's just uh, just having a, that right amount of manpower really makes all the difference no, so yeah. having these having these uh, guys you know added to the uh, to the detective division and having the guys available to come out on their days uh, and, and time off to assist us with the uh, other details is really significant and just ultimately makes Madison uh, the greatest place on earth 
Absolutely. Uh, Chief Deputy Taylor, what's new to the Sheriff's Department? Well, currently we have a hiring process underway due to the fact that uh, Madison PD was able to recruit one of our deputies uh, to come over and work at Madison. So if anybody's interested in starting their career in law enforcement, uh, just go down to the Sheriff's Department and request an application for a full-time merit deputy position. They need to be back in by noon on September 4th and we will be doing our physical agility and written testing on September 5th after that so we're in that hiring process and John pointed out if you have a full staff you're able to go and have those extra burdens right now we're taxing our deputies all of our staff over there just to meet the base mission statement we're moving forward with that accomplishing those goals and we're looking for the day that we're full staffed and have everybody we currently have deputy wheeler at the academy uh he's one, maybe four weeks in now started his fourth week of the training out of the 15 up there so uh, we're moving forward with it I think both of you can attest to the fact that a career in law enforcement can certainly be a rewarding one and a long one yes yep we hope uh, definitely both rewarding it in a long one but uh, yeah the ca Academy itself is really problematic for us as well uh, actually trying to get somebody into the Academy uh, before COVID-19 it was tough I mean the Academy was was stretched then and and they would take maybe 140 40, 50, 60 uh, uh, cadets at the academy. Now with the COVID-19, they've cut that in half. So you can imagine it was tough getting them in normally. Uh, so you can imagine how it is now getting uh, new officers in. One of my new hires, uh, Nicole Midget, uh, we have her on the uh, on the list, hopefully to go in November. Haven't quite got that confirmed yet, but, uh, but we believe that's going to be the case. But uh, when I went to uh, uh, sign her up for the academy, in three minutes the uh, the class was full within three minutes so he basically had to be sitting on top of the computer and punch the name in and be ready to go so uh, it's it's that challenging right now so just another burden another challenge that uh, that we face uh, within law enforcement as far as uh, you know hiring process and getting them academy trained uh, fortunately the governor has extended their their uh, law enforcement capabilities from one year to two uh, so we can train them in-house. Uh, they do have arrest powers and, and are, ba are able to assist in certain ways. But uh, without that academy behind them, you know, we're hesitant to, you know, obviously put them out there uh, full-fledgedly and uh, have them take calls. We are. Oh, you, thank you. I was going to say, with that, just with the tr uh, trend, we've always strived with going and giving the much needed individualized training for somebody. But now, uh, just as far as everybody wanting accountability for individuals, it's more important for us as our law enforcement community here is to make sure that we present for the new officers the good base foundation knowledge that they have to have that they would get at the academy because as john said it could take six months could take almost a year and a half to get them actually into an academy class graduated and get them back here working for the community um, and to turn them loose full-fledged with here's your badge here's your gun here's your car that would be irresponsible for us as administrators and uh, leaders here in law enforcement to put somebody out there without giving them the foundation for success new things coming up uh involving the city of madison and the mass police department i know that you know the committee has been meaning to update the department's uh sops standard operating procedures yeah absolutely uh one of the mayor's uh, thoughts uh, that's coming into office is to uh, to upgrade and update uh, our standard operating procedures, and uh, it's been a great turnout from the community. Um, we've had some uh, excellent uh, individuals that have uh, volunteered to uh, to be on the committee. We've uh, met probably, I think, three times uh, with the fourth meeting coming up in September. Able to go over all of our standard operating procedures, which is currently stands at 39 of them, uh, to go over each one individually, uh, look at the uh, what the company, what the firm recommended that the, the mayor had hired to, to review it. Uh, we kind of put our thoughts and ideas into it. Uh, the committee members put their thoughts and ideas into it, and then ultimately we'll turn it over over to our governing body, what's the Board of Public Works and Safety, and they'll make any necessary changes. But um, something that certainly uh, needed to be done, and uh, and we're going over with a fine tooth comb and uh, and working it out to what we feel is the best for the officers, and uh, and ultimately the most important thing is what's best for the community. Right. I think it's one of those things that you know, looking at these 
uh, you know, reviewing the policies and things like that. That's not that's not at any means a knock at the department. It's just a matter of it, correct. It's been a while since they've been. It has at. been. Yeah, it's it definitely needs to be done. Uh, like I said, there's always some tweaking to be done. It's nothing's ever going to be a, uh, a perfect uh, living document for us to go by. But uh, but to have a uh, even members from law enforcement, members from our community to sit down and, and take a look at them, and, and the different viewpoints are, are well taken, and uh, we appreciate their efforts. We we just want nothing but what's the best for. Uh, the Madison Police Department and ultimately the uh, uh, citizens of Madison. I think we, you know, we talk about you know a career in law enforcement. Hopefully, is a, a long one and an enjoyable one, but it's also one where there's constantly there's education you know as you're going along with your yes. career so that means that there's always there's always room for new ideas we never stop training it's uh, mandated every year we go we uh, uh, go above and exceed the uh, the recommended hours of training and uh, it uh, seems like almost on a daily basis now where there's some kind of training going on somewhere within the county yeah I was gonna say I've noticed that Madison PD is uh, I Brad Demery, he's out there doing some uh, physical tactics, and it's basically a physical conditioning for some of the officers. I know they've been going to attend his training recently, and they were saying they've had just the they feel the benefit on their body and their mind just feeling a little bit better about themselves and the confidence by going to that uh, class that Brad's been teaching so kudos for supporting him and allowing him to go and have the time to teach others thank you and I, I, we really encourage you that uh, the only thing I ask is whatever they do please don't get hurt so Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we hope that's not the case uh, we know that sometimes that's inevitable but uh, yeah also Demery's just done an outstanding job uh, uh, leading that and uh, it's it's more of a uh, ground fighting technique if you will it's uh, you know most of them end up on the ground and if we get the officers trained to um, to take somebody into custody uh, at, uh, without them getting hurt obviously and without the uh, person that you're trying to detain getting hurt uh, then that's huge and that's our that's our whole goal but uh, yeah the participation has been strong and uh, and Brad's done an outstanding job with it I know that's been one of his goals since about 2016 he was wanting to become an instructor and putting together a program and that was one of those that you see something that's been years and work coming together and actually being able to be implemented in the community here and that's that's what it's about I mean he's been able to obtain his goal his dream his desire and putting it there so you just took a a thought or a desire somewhere and now it's actually making a difference and an impact on the law enforcement community which is awesome and yeah, when we see that happen at the Really, uh, really means a lot to not only them, but uh, to me as a chief and chief deputy, but as uh, the department as a whole. I, I like seeing the uh, the young officers, uh, as the chief deputy just stated, uh, take a thought, take a goal, run with it, and, and make it work. And uh, it's very rewarding for everybody involved. Now it's great to see so many so many of the officers be able to benefit from that too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody certainly does in one way, shape, or form. And Even me, the old guy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still pretty agile, AJ. I would say so. I've seen you. <laughs> Great dance moves. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm about that. <laughs> but um, tough on a stair climber. Right. That, that's very true. But um, as we you know, we talk about new th we talk about new things in um, Madison. Talk about new things uh, going on and developing. Certainly, uh, a work in progress is Main Street and our entrance into Madison with the Milton Madison Bridge Approach Project recently reopening. Um, and as part of that, um, biggest change. I know it's something that has talked about ideas that have been formulated for a while. Um, the recent rerouting of truck traffic on Main Street. Yeah, Main Street, that's it's really exciting if you think about it. I mean, we're going to uh, hopefully go back a few years to the way it used to be, a little you know, a calmer approach and a calmer ride through town. That's a, I know that's the mayor's goal. Uh, as of July 1st, the city took over Main Street, Hanover Hill. So um, we're looking forward to uh, to what that's going to look like in the future. Uh, I know there's going to be some committees formed and, uh, and a lot of good ideas thrown out there. But in the meantime, we're trying to calm the traffic flow down. Um, We've asked the semis and uh, anything 10 ton or above to, to stay off Main Street, and so far they've, they've done a great job in doing that. I'd like to thank some of our area trucking companies. They they stepped up and and uh, took the different route, took the bypass down Clifty, and then back down 421. So that's uh, that's made a huge huge difference on our Main Street. It's uh, it's much quieter, much calmer, and uh, we'll keep uh, putting our thoughts and ideas out there. Uh, we'll be patrolling it heavy, and uh, and hopefully we can we can ease that and and. Uh, we want people to take a slow ride through Madison. There's a lot to, a lot of good things to look at, right? So we want everybody to take a slow ride down our main street and uh, and hopefully stop and enjoy things. So that's our ultimate goal, and that's what we're working on now. I think it's ultimately it's a safety goal, you know, for yeah. one. But then it's also, you know, I know 
several logistics involved with having the trucks off Main Street. That means sure. that the road will hold up longer and all that. So yeah, a, lot a, of, a lot of factors play into it. It's just hard on the street, and it, really it's hard on our buildings, too. I mean, those are those are pretty old buildings, right? And, uh, you know, to take that vibration and those type of things is, is, is hard on them as well. So it just uh, makes your experience of visiting downtown Madison that much more pleasant. So we're working on it. Uh, we got, a, I think, a second reading coming up on a, a new ordinance that pertaining to Maine. It's just going to spell things out. Um, you know, one thing we, we want to do is calm the traffic and keep the big trucks off uh, Main Street. But one thing we don't want to do is harm anybody's business nor uh, hurt our farmers. So there's going to be some uh, some information uh, within the uh, within the new ordinances that'll that'll take care of all that. So looking forward to getting that in place. Sir. Uh, Chief Deputy Taylor, <laughs> as uh, we were discussing during the break, I know another thing that is recently being implemented that benefits all of our law enforcement is uh, the new CAD system. Yeah. Well, first things first, can you explain what a CAD system is? Computer aided dispatching, but I go and call it a record management system, an RMS. It, anything and everything, whether it goes to when you call 911 and automatically generate your call there through the case reports, the any notes that a law enforcement officer, the jail, uh, assisting agencies, it's all together. Uh, Jefferson County, Madison PD, Hanover PD, any other agency that's been working in and around Jefferson County, all have had their own systems, nothing integrated together. Uh, if John needed a case report from one of the other agencies, he had to call and talk to somebody out there, as opposed to now, once everybody learns the nooks and crannies, he can go online, get on his computer, and we're sharing cross permissions to see our submitted case reports to the prosecutor's office. He can see what we did with it. If they've been booked into the jail, we can see their previous history. And it's just now sharing information that hasn't been able to be done in our community for, well, most of your career has always been here in Jefferson County. And this is something new for you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like the chief deputy said, allows us to, uh, to work as one more so than ever. We can get on and see what they're working on and vice versa. We may be working on the same case, maybe looking at the same suspect. And, and uh, with this uh, new system, we're all tied in together, and it's going to make uh, things much more efficient and, and ultimately make them better for, uh, for any victims that we may have here. And it allows us right now um, to connect the dots, just that information that uh, what may have happened last night is a case uh, on my way here Hanover called and said hey we've got information relating to an arrest you made last night they're able to go in and do a supplement report right into our case and it's going to be able to be reviewed submitted everything together for the prosecution for that right. anything that can improve those communications is going to be beneficial in the long run yeah. and it's one of those if you know all the pieces of the puzzle you can make an informed decision uh, or they don't slip through the cracks yeah, it's been, <laughs> I believe this has been an arduous task. Uh, I haven't uh, been involved that much, uh, but uh, I know the chief deputy has. Uh, uh, the chief detective over at the sheriff's department, Yancey Denning, has worked hard on it. And, and, and a big shout out to my uh, assistant chief, Major Ben McKay. He's uh, He's been living this thing for like the last two years, it seems yeah. like. And uh, he, uh, he's been working hand in hand with the sheriff's guys. And, uh, and it's... It's, it's been difficult, but uh, you know everybody uh, knows that it's going to be best for the department and, and, uh, and ultimately for the community. So everybody's put the time and effort in, and uh, it's finally here. We're up and running. This is one of those ideas that goes back to 2016, getting a joint record management system together. And as the chief said, it really has been an arduous task for at least 18 months now that it's almost been a daily topic or something there so it's nice that last Wednesday when we went live we had a couple hiccups a couple bugs to work through but it's there it's over with we don't have to do the weeks and months of training for it it's <laughs> it's finally off the plate. The next big task is for the Sheriff's Department is the new jail building. So as we uh, work our way towards the end of the program, Chief Wallace, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yep. Just a reminder, everybody knows that school's back up and running. Uh, we just hope everybody uh, stays healthy, stays safe. Um, our school resource officers, we can't forget about those guys. Uh, they work through the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Tim Armstrong, Jacob McVeigh doing an outstanding job up there. So, uh, can't forget Looking Dan Thurston. And Dan Thurston, yes, sir. Yeah. Dan Thurston out at the out at Southwestern. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, we appreciate those guys, um, and uh, we've got some great cooperation between the departments and the schools. So looking forward to a great school year. Yeah.
touching on with the bus safety. I do know both uh, school systems have been reaching out uh, through their school resource officers, letting us know where there's been trouble issues with people passing buses with the bus arms out. I know Southwestern uh, has been able to provide us video of each of those incidences. Uh, Madison, we've been redirecting officers to the area of problems. I know Madison PD also had some to the trouble areas for traffic control. So we are taking an aggressive uh, stance on the safety at early morning uh, arrivals and dismiss dismissals in the afternoon. I know we, we don't have to remind too many people about the incident that happened up in Rochester uh, involving uh, somebody passing a school bus and it's a situation that we not for a moment want to have happen in our community. So those buses, you know, when the, when the lights are on and the stop arm is off, you just gotta stop. And I think the most important thing, and this is something I talked about with Jefferson County Prosecutor David Sutter, uh, the cameras on those buses are pretty darn impressive in terms of their quality. So uh, they're, yeah. you're not gonna be able to hide from that. <laughs> Some of them are in it. We make the jokes about how a security camera at a gas station, you can't make a person's face out, but we can look at uh, Mars and see the Mars dust on there. Well, I almost compare some of those school bus cameras to those NASA cameras being able to see little fine details, read license plates, see the driver as they drive past, looking on their phone and disregarding things. So um, it even puts the speed of the bus, the location, you can see the bus arms, you're able to even see the GPS location. So if the person says, I wasn't there, they tie right in. Yeah, you're here at this location, at this intersection, date and time, and that was you on camera. And there will be, there'll be penalties and punishment for the crimes related to passing that school bus. If charged as an uh, infraction, uh, administratively through the BMV convicted, you would lose your license for a set amount of time. If you do it in a reckless manner, and you're convicted of it, you could go and face uh, the misdemeanor charge with fines, costs, and some jail time. Certainly. So definitely, definitely want everybody to be safe out there for sure. Look out for our kids. Our kids are number one. That's the that's our number one goal to protect them. So yeah, we definitely want to keep them safe. Well, Chief Wallace, Chief Deputy Taylor, as always, appreciate you guys uh, coming on the program. Look forward to seeing you next month.